اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Reporting Measurement Model, Model Fit, Reliability and Validity Now that we have understood how to assess model fit, how to check reliability and how to establish validity in a study, the next step is how to report it. Now in this session, I am going to guide you as to how to report all these important statistics. Now let's run our model here. Let's assume this is our measurement model. We go to Calculate basic algorithm simply press start now you've got your results here let's say the first thing that we need to report is outer loadings in this case we are going to use the standardized metrics here and i'm going to open an excel sheet because this will help me format the results in a much easier manner so reporting measurement model, what are the ingredients? You have to report your fit statistics. You have to report your factor loadings, cron patch alpha, composite reliability, average variance extracted for convergent validity. And finally, you report your discriminant validity. And in the discriminant validity, we've got two criterions, the older one, Fornell and Locker, and the new one, HTMT. Now, both of them are part of construct validity. So you may write here, construct validity and these two they become the part of construct validity now how do we start reporting so reporting measurement model you can create a heading let me do it in a word document measurement model the first thing that we do is we report our fit statistics. Reporting a measurement model. So model fit statistics that we need is C min divided by degrees of freedom, GFI, CFI, TLI, SRMR, RM, SEA. So how do you report it? Here is a template. Confirmatory factor analysis was computed using Smart PLS to test the measurement models. As part of the confirmatory factor analysis, factor loadings were assessed for each item, one item. So now if you deleted an item, you just write one item, two item, three items, and then mention the item number or their code. Was removed due to low factor loadings. Now, normally I take less than 0 0.50, but you may take less than 0 0.40 as well. The fit measures were used to assess the model overall goodness of fit. Now these were the fit statistics used and all values were within their respective common acceptance level. These are the references that I used for acceptance level. The three factor model. Now in this case, I've got a three factor model here. Now if you've got a four factor model, five factor, whatever factor model you have, you can just put it in. Now, okay, now these are the three factors. In this case, you will change it to your own factors. Now, what are the names? So CCOPOC, let's say it's collaborative culture. OP, organizational performance and OC, organizational commitment. Now it yielded a good fit, see table one. So here is your table one. And where are these fit statistics? Now this is the reference for these statistics. I will share the papers which has the full reference for these citations. Uh, in the description, you will have the reference for those papers that you can look into and get the full reference for these papers. Now, let me show them to you here. So I've got here, these are my own papers and I've used these references in my own papers. Here is another example of how to report confirmatory factor analysis, results, factor loadings, AVE and all those other details. How to report it? Here is the text. And in this case, here is the text. And the references are here. And these, the reference to these two papers will be shared in the description. Now moving on. Now once this is done, let me copy this and put it in a Word document so that you have a template for you. Now where are my fit statistics? Now once I run the model, I will go to, first of all, let's look at the factor loadings. Again, anything less than 0 0.50 or 0 0.40? No. So I'm going to use this. Although this is less than the recommended 0 
but again you do not delete items just because they are less than 0 0.70 you only delete them if deleting these items will improve your reliability and validity statistics in this case they are already above the required threshold look at this already green so i do not need to delete any item to improve my reliability and validity so where are my fit statistics model fit here are your fit statistics copy them to excel paste them here now you can simply copy this table again from here to this document here and use these statistics in your own table you can format this existing table or you can use or have this table and format it as per your requirement copy it let's paste it you just need to change or add these obtained values from the table from smart pls so all borders is done you can reduce the size of the rows and columns like this all right now that this is done you have all and you need to put in these values here as well from this table here just put in these values now once this is done the next step is factor loadings i've already reported here and you can use this reference as well for 0 0.60 well you can use the here reference of 2021 for 0 0.40 as well and i'll share the reference in the description as well that you only delete items if they are or if they can improve the reliability and validity so that reference will be shared in the description as well moving on next is construct reliability so construct reliability was assessed using cron batch alpha and composite reliability cron batch alpha for each construct in the study was above the required limit of this 0 0.70 composite reliability again ranged between this and it was above the threshold of 0 0.70 as well hence construct reliability is established you simply copy this and let's put it here you need to simply add the values the range of values where are the range of values here are your range of values construct reliability and validity here it is so this is the standardized cron batch alpha unstandardized composite reliability we'll go for a standardized one and then your ave so you just simply need to copy these or copy it to excel new sheet here now i'm going to remove this here and i'm going to do one more thing we haven't reported the loadings so i'm just going to get the loadings from here copy to excel and let's paste it here and further let's get our ave now the next thing is next up convergent validity which is which is part of construct validity so convergent validity of the construct was estimated using average variance extracted this is the reference the average variance extracted values were over the threshold of 0 0.50 hence the convergent validity was established let's copy it and let's paste it here and where is convergent validity let's get it we have already copied it into excel here it is average variance extracted so let's format this table first so what i'm going to do is i'm going to call this loadings and then i'm going to arrange the loadings in one column cut it paste it cut it paste it do not need these columns delete now let's get this cut it paste it cc oc and op Now let's copy this 
First, let's format it. Right click, format cells, number, and three decimal points. Now I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. Let's cut it and put it off to table one. So let's say I've once you paste it, you do not need this table. This is your table two. Now we are going to report discriminant validity, the final part. Discriminant validity. Now we are establishing discriminant validity through Fornell and Larker criterion and HTMT. We have already talked about this in the previous session. So I'm just going to copy these results or the write up and I'm going to paste it here. So discriminant validity assessed through Fornell and Locker and HTMT and according to Fornell and Locker criterion, discriminant validity is established when square root of AVE construct is greater than its correlation with the other constructs in the study. And uh, let's say, in this case, well, we did establish discriminant validity is established using Fornell and Locker criterion. So let's name it table three. Now using HTMT ratio, all ratios were less than the required limit of 0.85, hence discriminant validity was established. Now results of discriminant validity are presented in table three and four. So you can write here, let's say Fornell and Larker criterion. This is table three and four is HTMT ratio. You may remove it from here. Now this is how you report your measurement model. And I need table three and four. Let's call it table one with indices. Let's call it table two. You can format it in any format, a PPA or any other format that your university uses. Loadings reliability and convergent validity and finally your table 3 final and locker criterion and table 4 HTMT ratio let's add table 3 where is our table 3 discriminant validity the first one is HTMT, so let's copy HTMT first. Let's go here, paste it, and where is the next one? Fornell and Locker criterion. Here it is. Now for Fornell and Locker criterion, since we are making comparisons, so I would like it to be bold and italic. This one bold and italic as well. This one bold and italic. And here in the end, I will put a note as well. Let's copy it paste it and you put a note bold and italics value are square root of AB right and now HTMT ratio copy it and paste it now you cannot copy directly from smart PLS to Word because it will be in the form of text. So you, in order to convert it into tables, use Excel. So this is how you can report your measurement model. Now this is the text that you write. You can edit it, but rephrase it. Maybe you will get some plagiarism and then you've got your fit indices, their recommended value, their sources and their obtained values. Then your loadings, reliability and convergent validity. And finally your discriminant validity. I hope this quick session would have helped you understand how to report your measurement model from smart PLS results. Thank you very much.